welcome back to my channel. My name is Trina and this is the takeaways and overall tips and tricks that I learned on my hiking trip to Zion, to Antelope Canyon, Horseshoe Bend, and Arches National Park. So the main takeaway that I know that a lot of people want to know is uh, the finances of this trip. I won't deny that this trip wasn't cheap to do and everyone definitely may like the views and the videos and the pictures that I got out of it, but definitely what's something everyone wants to know is how much it cost me. So starting off first is hotels. That is going to be your highest cost, unless you are renting an RV or staying in your car, definitely hotel cost is gonna be the highest thing of your trip, at least if you're going to where I'm going or where I went. So our first hotel in Page, Arizona was Home Two Suites by Hilton. So just letting you guys know and prefacing this now, I am a American Express Hilton Honors Card member. So I acquire Hilton hotel points through my spending on my credit card. So I'm not exactly sure the exact conversion rate, but however much money I spend, I start to accumulate points. And those points can get me free hotel stays or not free, but just like the equivalent point value to that hotel. Now, the value of the hotel points wise and the price on a monetary conversion are going to be very different and dif uh, very depending on how popular the hotel is at that time, um, the type of hotel that it is, and sometimes the cash rate to pay for the hotel opposed to using your points, the money rate might actually be better. So starting off, I stayed at the Home Two Suites in Page, Arizona, or Home Two Suites Lake Powell. That one was 19,000 points and 20,000 points for each night, totaling at 39,000 points. So what you wanna do is to get the cash equivalent or the most base price is you multiply it by 0 0.005. So each point, each hotel point is worth half of a cent. So 0 0.005. So that comes out to about $195 a night. However, that is not the rate that they would charge someone who was just paying for the room. The monetary equivalent for that night plus taxes, so with the points you don't have to pay taxes, is $243.89 for the two nights. Now, how I ended up paying for it, um, me and Catherine, we split the entire trip afterwards and we wanted to still make sure that I was compensated for using my points. So we kind of met in the middle of um, the cash value switched into dollars plus the actual monetary equivalent. So we met in the middle with that and then split that down the middle. Um, the midpoint for that was going to be $219.45 for those first two nights. For the second hotel, Hoodoo Moab Curio Collection by Hilton. Now that is a more luxury style hotel, so it did cost us a little bit more. That hotel was more than double our home two suites. So just to give you an idea of the luxury style of that hotel and just how much more it could potentially cost. Just to give you also another idea, a Ritz-Carlton or Waldorf Astoria, just very, very high-end top-tier hotel, can range anywhere from 250,000 to 300,000 points a night. So for this Hoodoo Moab stay, we did 49,000 points per night, which came out to 98,000 points. Once those 98,000 points were multiplied by that 0 0.005, half a cent, it came out to 490. The monetary equivalent to book that hotel for those nights was $761.91. The midpoint we met at for those two nights in Hudu Moab were going to be $625.96. So I'm going to keep a running total right here that's going to specify all of the different financial aspects that I speak about and keep a running total going down, seeing how much we really spent during the trip. So for our hotel, our total cost was $869.85. Now, if you were in my shoes, it's up to you whether or not you wanted to truly calculate the hotel points. Some people may consider it free, but me, I know that they have a monetary value to them, so I wanted to get the most reasonable rate for me and Catherine to split it. 
So what you want to do to calculate whether or not you're getting a good deal using your hotel points versus paying directly with cash or on card and paying it without using your hotel points is to do this math equation. So what we did to figure out whether or not it was worth it, you divide the monetary cost, so what you would be paying if you were not to use your Hilton Honors points. So in this case for Home 2 Suites, we did $243.89 divided by the total cost of the points that it is. So divided by 39,000. Now that came out to 0 0.00625 and counting. So with that number being above 0 0.005, which is the cash value of those points, that means you are getting a good deal. If you see anything less than 0 0.005, aka 0 0.004 or 0 0.003, you are better off using the cash value and paying for that or redeeming your points for cash if that's what you prefer to do. So I highly recommend you do the math ahead of time instead of being uh, spontaneous and booking it because you think it's free, you're not getting a good deal. You wanna make sure that the value you are getting is more worth it. Just to give you an idea for our stay in Hudu Moab, our value was 0 0.007, so we even got a better deal. My brother says that when he books hotels, he tries to get the rate as high as one point something, which from what I see here, I wasn't able to get that good a deal, but as long as it is above 0 0.005, you are getting a good deal. Moving on to driving costs. So this trip, you can choose to fly. I d with COVID going on, we didn't want to risk that. And also we wanted to be able to have the freedom of having our own vehicle to be able to drive to any of our locations, to go to restaurants and just feel safe in the comfort of our own car, as well as it's extra storage for us to just keep what we need in the car. So that cost us, so the total mileage for the trip so we wanted to do separate methods of payment for the car. So we chose to use my car. My car is relatively new. It was um, purchased in 2019, July of last year. And um, the amount of miles that we put on the car was 1,691.2. So that's a lot of miles to put on a car. And so we wanted to put a monetary value to that. Um, we kind of Googled around seeing how people calculate miles. It depends on different companies and whether or not it's used for work. We just chose a rate of 30 cents per mile. So we did that and multiplied it out. That became $507.36 for mileage alone. We also split that cost as well. And then gas. So we honestly thought we would spend more on gas on this trip, but honestly, it really wasn't that much. Um, we also did think that the cost of gas would drop significantly moving east because cost of gas in Los Angeles is quite high. However, um, the, the price of the gas on more eastbound didn't drop that much. I would guess that it would drop more significantly if you were to go more towards the Midwest. But as of Arizona and Utah, the price difference isn't that great. Um, so the different costs that we spent on gas, and sometimes it wasn't filling up a full tank, it was sometimes half a tank, would be $34, $28, $16, $21, or $19.38. So the total amount of gas money we spent on gas was $119.23 for the entire trip. Moving on is food. So we also did think we were gonna spend more money on food than we did, but also we did purchase a lot of food in ahead of time just for snacks, drinks, just to have on the drive since it is a significant drive, um, about eight to nine hours on the way there. And plus you also do lose an hour once you're on your way towards the east. And then coming back, it did take us about 11 hours. You do gain that hour on the way back. So food costs we had snacks so we spent 37.83 at bristol farms one day just pre-buying those non-perishable snacks on one day that we had and then 42.65 at target and then 68.11 at bristol farms the day prior just buying some more perishable foods um, and that was a total of 148 dollars and 59 cents for snacks now, I do know that that is a little bit excessive. You don't have to buy that many snacks. We just wanted to be able to have the different options in our back seat just for us to turn around and be like, I want this snack while I'm driving to keep me awake. Now for actual food at each of our locations. So we spent $56.05 for lunch in St. George at a Thai restaurant called Benja's. 
we spent $39 in Page, Arizona. Now, that one is a little bit less expensive, less expensive because it was, we only shared one dish for the two of us. We weren't that hungry, so we just ordered one pasta for the two of us. It was a real crab uh, pasta, so it was $33 without tip and tax, so it was quite expensive considering it was only one dish. And then um, both of our hotels did uh, supply breakfast for us, so um, the Home Two Suites gave us little lunch boxes, as you've seen in the vlog videos, of uh, two hard-boiled eggs, a bagel, cream cheese, and a yogurt. Um, so that was each morning there. And then also um, the following hotel did give us breakfast vouchers. So it was really nice that we weren't expecting that cost to be covered, but that all of those breakfast and lunch, uh, breakfast vouchers covered our meals. And then lunch in Page the following day was spent forty six forty one for some fried chicken. And then we spent $8 at Sonic's for some ice cream. We didn't uh, have dinner that night because we were still full from the fried chicken. And then we spent $46.85 at Moab Garage after our hike at the Arches National Park. And then $62.36 for the night prior at Antica Forma for a little nice Italian dinner. We spent $3.64 at Wendy's on our way home, and then we spent $53.44 at Josie's for Catherine's birthday dinner. Now, the total we spent on food while in each location was $315.75. Moving on, we have equipment. Now, this price can definitely vary per person depending on what they already do or don't have at home. Um, Things like sunglasses, we already had hats, you know, for sun protection, we already had. So this is just some of the things we didn't already have that we knew we wanted to have for this trip and things that we can definitely still utilize in future trips. So that would be hiking boots. So we have been hiking before, but we always just wore our tennis shoes. But knowing that these were going to be more steep and more serious hikes, we wanted to have shoes that have proper grip proper ankle support. So we purchased good boots online and those cost, um, for the two boot pairs of boots together, it was $159.90. And then we also purchased, their, the brand was called Miracol, M-I-R-C-O-L. It is a knockoff brand version of the Camelback water backpacks. So the hydration backpacks, they have a ton on Amazon. The Camelback is the name brand. So if you feel more comfortable buying the name brand, you just know that you're gonna be paying for it as well. So we bought the brand Miracol. Um, it cost $33.99 for the blue pack backpack that Catherine got and cost me $35.99 for the magenta pink backpack that I got. We also did purchase something called a Peabody. It is a cardboard funnel to pee in. Um, we didn't end up using it. It cost us $12, um, but it's something we just wanted to have just in case um, we did really need to use the restroom on either our hikes or on the drive over. There were several hundreds of miles during our drive that did not have any restroom, so we were fortunate to have it even though we didn't need to use it. So the total cost of those three different items um, came out to $90.85. Finally, we have activity cost. Now, something that a lot of people don't expect when they are traveling is the cost of entrance fees. So different locations we went to, whether it was just driving through, it does cost money to go inside. So starting off with the Zion Scenic Route, we chose not to hike Zion this time just because it didn't work in our schedule. And plus, since we were originally planning on going there and our hotel sold out, we figured it would be a lot of people. And with COVID going on, we wanted to be able to socially distance ourselves. So we just decided to take the Scenic Drive. However, the Scenic Drive does still cost money. It is $35 per car, so depending on how many people you have in your car, you can split that down a little bit more, um, and that pass lasts for seven days. 
Moving on, we have our kayak tour. So as you saw in the second vlog, we did go on a kayak tour in Lake Powell and then that Lake Powell leads into Lower Antelope Valley Canyon. And so that cost us about $90, $99 a person. Plus taxes, it came out to $217.60. We also did tip our tour guide $40 for the two of us. That is totally up to your own discretion. We just typically like to tip when we do get good service. Moving on also Lake Powell on its own had its own entrance fee, unfortunately. Even though we were with the tour group, it still cost money for each of our vehicles to go inside. That cost was $30 per car and also lasted for seven days. Moving on, we had Horseshoe Bend. Now Horseshoe Bend is a smaller location and the parking lot does fill up. Um, that cost is $10 for one day only. It is a very good value, just pay $10 and you're into the parking lot, you're close by to the very, very short hike. Um, but it is, you aren't able to street park anywhere nearby. So $10, I believe is fair. You split it up within, within your car. And then finally, we have the entrance fee for Arches National Park. That was $30 per car, lasts for seven days as well. Now, in the case of Arches National Park for us, they actually didn't check our pass, but that's also because we showed up at 6.30 in the morning and I don't believe anyone was working yet, but it would be better to be safe than sorry and have that pass in your phone ready in the case they do check you. Um, you'd rather not be in trouble with the authorities for not paying $30 versus sneaking past, saving it, and then if you get caught, you could get other ramifications. As you can see here, the total spent on this trip was $2,374.23. Now keep in mind this was divided between two people. However, I do understand that a trip like this is not always affordable for everyone. Just save up if you can. I was originally going to attach some tips and tricks as well as some advice besides the financial parts, but this video is already way too long. Um, I will be sure to put some of those tips in the description box but if you have any questions or plan to take a trip like this definitely comment down below let me know if you have anything any questions I'd love to answer them for you and don't forget to like comment and subscribe if you liked what you saw let me know if I can help you with anything else see you next time